if we can climb in like this. What? What? Oh no. Well, this is my foreman Austin Barker that uh, we've been talking about. And between all of us, we just did a tremendous, tremendous amount of work on the locomotive. But, uh, and, you know, it's a team effort that takes a lot of people, but I, 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 it just wouldn't be fair if, if I didn't mention the tremendous hours that Austin put in. I mean, as a foreman, that kind of comes with the territory. But and I, and I don't mean to put you on the spot, Austin. I, I say this a lot, and I never mean to put you on the spot. But the credit for the reassembly of this locomotive and the engineering acumen that he has, uh, drawing on CAD, we have CAD on his computer, and he will draw up something in a very, very quick way, quick manner, and we'll get that drawing to a steel supplier and next thing you know we've got running boards and all we have to do is put them together the cab deck, the cab floor, I mean just everything locomotive fireman Ted Schulte rebuilt the air brakes piece by piece completely disassembled them and between Austin and myself we got it all up and running and this type of equipment is very specialized and there's fewer and fewer people that have the understanding of how this type of older system functions and there were some to say well why don't you just take all that old stuff out of there and just replace it with the modern system and yeah that that seems like something that you you'd consider from a person that's operated this locomotive and other locomotives a lot the functionality of this system is designed for this this locomotive and it's designed for the trains and the way that we operate those trains a 26 system the, the modern system it would work too to some extent but bearing in mind that system was designed for steam uh, diesel locomotives and so the dusty dirty environment of a steam locomotive brings with it an old its own set of circumstances and this system here was designed for a steam locomotive and let me tell you when we took some of it apart especially the air filters I'm here to tell you it was designed to not be maintained and to be very dirty for a long time so we've got it all cleaned up and that special oil I was telling you about actually works its way back through there and it has a small cleaning benefit to it it keeps everything lubricated we've got some modern pieces in here this is a what's known as a telemetry device it communicates the end of train air pressure so we can see that and we have what's known as an MU controller and this is newly built we, we built this all in-house we had uh, a wonderful electrician that designed it I told him basically what we wanted and we took the earlier version of this box which had served well for many many years but it was old and tired and worn out and so we made some upgrades to it and we installed a few safety features to it we also have the modern style of engine uh, engine kill switch the fuel cutoff switch and a few other little things and what this allows us to do is we can plug into and couple it's a process known as MU multiple unit and we'll connect to another modern steam locomotive or excuse me diesel locomotive and I can operate it from this seat so I can run the steam locomotive and the diesel locomotive from right here now it's interesting on a uh, steam locomotive you have to hang out the cab quite a bit you can't see you've got a really small little window here but that window really restricts your view if it's cold out you've got the window closed and you can't see very much the boiler actually protrudes out and it gets larger and then it tapers back inward so you have a very little narrow window to see out so you if you look at pictures of railroad engineers through the years especially on this locomotive you're leaning out the cab both the engineer and the fireman lean out the cab and that's so you can see a lot of people think well you can't see very much on a steam locomotive but by the time you get your head out the window you see what you need to see it's like anything you get acclimated to the working conditions we've got the whistle throttle air brake gauges and this is the cab display for that safety control system that I mentioned headlight control switch 
there's very few modern necessities in a steam locomotive. One of them is, is our cab radio and the telemetry system and of course the modern safety control system. Other than that, the locomotive is original. All the different gauges and water columns and piping and everything is original. We have had to upgrade some of the valves. We've gone with the modern steel valve that's rated for the steam pressure. But we do have a lot of the original valves that we have an inventory of really good valves. And we can machine this inner part here, this stem. We made all of this is all new. All of this hardware is all new here. Clean up these, these water glasses. But all this hardware is new. All the hardware on the water column, the new plugs, all of that is all new. Washout plugs, again, as I mentioned on the outside, they're all new. Steam lines, steam pressure gauge lines. It was only almost a year from the time we really got in earnest, really started in on the locomotive, it was really about a year. And uh, Austin and I worked for seven days a week. Was it seven months? Seven months, seven days a week. And my, uh, my wife and his wife were, were just, um, they get the credit too for, for allowing us to work on Easter, to work on Mother's Day. So the credit goes to them as well. We put the original style cab floor in, wooden cab. And a new floor here. And this we put in in 2011. It's kind of befitting this, this grand locomotive that's TIG welded stainless steel. And that plate will come out. You can see the little mounting bolts there. We can take that plane out and we can access some of our air brake components and some of the safety control valves and components.